This video demonstrates how to use Salesforce Connector in cloud application integration to publish and subscribe to Salesforce platform events. Salesforce provides a streaming API that streams events using the push technology. It also provides a subscription mechanism that clients can use to receive events in near real time. Salesforce Connector connects to the Salesforce messaging platform to enable real-time message processing. You can use Salesforce Connector to perform the following tasks. Configure a Salesforce connection, an event consumer and an event producer. Publish messages to Salesforce platform events. Subscribe to events from Salesforce streaming channels such as platform events and push topic queries. You must create a process in cloud application integration to publish and subscribe to Salesforce platform events. In this video, we will demonstrate how to define an event producer as an event target and an event consumer as an event source in a Salesforce connection. We will demonstrate how to use them in a cloud application integration process to produce an event into and consume an event from a Salesforce platform event. We will use the event producer to publish messages to a Salesforce platform event by using a cloud application integration process. We will use the event consumer to consume messages from the Salesforce platform event by using two cloud application integration processes. Let's first look at the Salesforce connection. The connection defines the authentication properties to connect to Salesforce. It also defines the event API settings, which include the consumer key and consumer secret associated with the Salesforce user account for API access. The event sources tab contains an event consumer field. This field defines the name of the Salesforce platform event or push topic query that you want to subscribe to. Note that you must use the prefix slash event slash for platform event names and slash topic slash for push topic query names. For our example, we will use a platform event name with the prefix slash event slash. The platform event name is the API name that you defined for the platform event in Salesforce. The event targets tab contains an event producer field. This field defines the name of the Salesforce platform event to which you want to publish messages. Note that you cannot configure an event target to publish messages to Salesforce push topic queries. Use the prefix slash event slash followed by the platform event name. After you publish the connection, you can view the connection metadata in the metadata tab. Let's now look at the producer process. In the start tab of the process, the binding is set to rest or soap because the producer process is not event based. The process is configured to run on the cloud server. In the input fields tab, we have a field to capture the event details. This is the message that we will publish to the Salesforce platform event. You can configure the type by selecting the category as Connection Defined Types and then browsing and selecting the Salesforce connection. Then select the event producer that you defined in the Salesforce connection. The producer process contains an assignment step to assign static values to the message fields. We have three fields here to assign values to the message fields. This confirms to the platform event definition that we are writing to. The producer process then contains a service step. In the service tab, the service type is set to connection. The connection field is set to the Salesforce connection. The action field is set to the event producer name that is defined in the Salesforce connection. When you configure the action field, application integration creates an input field automatically called event to capture the event details. You cannot delete this input field. You also cannot add more input fields. The input field takes its value from the event underscore in field that was defined earlier as an input field for the producer process. Let's save and publish the process. After you publish a process, application integration generates a REST and SOAP service URL that you can use to invoke the process. Let's now look at the first Salesforce consumer process. The process subscribes to a Salesforce platform event. When an event occurs, the Salesforce consumer process gets invoked. 
Let's look at the Start tab in the Salesforce Consumer Process. Note that the binding is set to Event so that the process gets invoked when a Salesforce event occurs. The Event Source Name field is set to the Event Consumer that is defined in the Salesforce connection. The process is configured to run on an agent. After you select an Event Consumer, Application Integration creates an input field called Event in the Input Fields tab to capture the event details. You cannot delete this input field. You also cannot add more input fields. There is no other configuration needed for the first consumer process as it is a simple process that listens to a platform event. The first consumer process is saved and published and is ready to be invoked when a Salesforce event occurs. Let's look at another Salesforce consumer process that subscribes to the same platform event configured in the first consumer process. The process is configured in the same way as the first consumer process. The only difference is that this process also contains output fields. In the output fields tab, we have configured three output fields, namely data, events and user. You can use these output fields in other steps if needed. The second consumer process then contains an assignment step to assign values to the output fields. The second consumer process is also saved and published and ready to be invoked when a Salesforce event occurs. We have now configured one producer process and two consumer processes. All these processes are configured to publish to and listen to the same Salesforce platform event. Let's invoke the producer process first by copying the REST service URL and pasting it into a browser. You can view the process execution details in the application integration console. Click the Processes tab and select Cloud here because the producer process is configured to run on the cloud server. Click the ID to view details of the process execution. The producer process has run successfully. You can click the Input Fields tab in the Service step to view details about the message that was published to the Salesforce platform event. Since we had configured the consumer processes to listen to the same platform event, the consumer processes must have been invoked when the producer process ran. Let's look at the execution details of the consumer processes. Click the Processes tab and select the secure agent where the consumer processes were configured to run. You can see here that both the consumer processes have been invoked and have run successfully. Click the ID to view the process execution details. You can click the Input Fields tab in the Start step to view the message details that were read from the Salesforce platform event. To summarize, this video demonstrated how to use Salesforce Connector to publish and subscribe to Salesforce platform events.